So now in this video we're going to look at the op amp wired as a current source. We're using the LM358 right here to uh, set a current. That's what we're going to do. We're going to have a uh, fairly reliable current where current's going to be the same regardless of what the load is. For the most part it will uh, drift a little bit. But in any case we have the uh, trim pot here. I got 10 volts at the power supply. Trim pot, ha uh, trim pot halfway is 5 volts. Now we're setting to the non-inverting input and that voltage is what the output tries to get the inverting input to have the same voltage as when it goes from the output to the inverting input. So we're going to go through either no load or we're going to go through the LED right here. Long lead anode of the output, short lead the cathode up one row. But in case we have a 1000 ohm resistor right here. So we set 5 volts. It's going to try to do what it can to set the inverting input to uh, 5 volts. So that 5 volts will be across the resistor. 1000 ohm resistor means that 1 milliamp per current will flow for every volt. So with 5 volts should be 5 milliamps of current even as load changes. So let's uh, zoom back and uh, set the meter to measure voltage. So at the supply, this is what's supplying the uh, op amp anyways at this point, we have just a spec below 10 volts. Now we will look at the trim pot and uh, you'll see there that we got uh, 5 volts right there, just a spec higher. Now we're going to set the meter to measure current. I just have a milliamp setting there. Red probe stays in that spot. And I think you can measure up to 600 milliamps with this meter, but uh, I can't find this meter anywhere anymore. It just kind of pops up once in a while, and uh, so it's not really sold anymore. So in any case, there you can see we got about 5.5 milliamps uh, at the output going from the output to the inverting input and then through the resistor. Now we're going to put it through the LED. Remember the short lead, the cathode is above the long lead, the anode. So it's not perfectly the same current for uh, whatever reason, but it's uh, really close. Even though we went from no load at all to going through an LED, which is a lot of load compared to no load at all. So now we had to open the circuit to measure current because the uh, current had to flow through the load and the meter and uh, whatnot. Uh, now we're going to look at voltages. The voltages are what's really important here and understanding them. Now we have uh, the LED, the cathode, I moved it from up there down to the inverting input. And as you can see it's lit up. It has current flowing through it. Power supply set to 5 volts and even the power supply says it's 5 milliamps right there. So sometimes that kind of drifts a little bit from where it is by about one milliamp or so. But it uh, looks like we're doing pretty good right there. Now we'll zoom back and look at voltages. So we already looked at the supply voltage of 10 volts. We'll just show that didn't change. I didn't turn the uh, trim pot at all. So that voltage is the same. Now, as I said before, the inverting input where the resistor is plugged in, the uh, output is doing the best it can to keep that voltage the same. And uh, so that's uh, uh, doing really good right there. We got the same voltages right there. Now we're going to go to the output and you're going to see the output is about 2 volts higher than the uh, voltage at the inverting input. That's because it takes about two, uh, 2 volts approximately for the LED to conduct and light up and it drops that voltage. So that doesn't matter what the load is dropping as long as the output can provide, this can probably go up to a little bit more than 8 volts. So we could uh, power a blue LED and uh, that's about it. After that point there's not enough supply voltage left anymore. You'll see that we still have at the output the uh, 5 volts. Now, uh, not the output, the inverting input, I mean right there, 5 volts. And if I go up to the output, you can see now we need 8 volts right there. A little bit more because the blue LED needs a little bit more voltage to get 5 milliamps of current through it. And so here is the uh, schematic uh, diagram, but I think I explained the circuit pretty good. So I'll just uh, use this to help reinforce it. There's the uh, op amp right there. You'll notice though that the inverting input is below the non-inverting input just because it uh, looks better on the schematic diagram. Generally, you work your way uh, more positive down to more negative. You adjust the schematic to do so. Whereas the physical component, we had to power the integrated circuit you probably saw those two pins, uh, pin 8 to the positive supply, uh, the ground pin, pin 4 to the negative supply. Right above it was the uh, trim pot going to the non-inverting input, 
Then we had our inverting input where the uh, resistor went to ground, as you can see there, and the output on top. Pretty straightforward. And uh, so we had uh, the resistor here. That is what set the current. As we said before, we used 5 volts, so we got 5 milliamps. Even as the load changed, and we saw that the output just had to raise the voltage more to overcome more load within its limits. So I put a little note down here. You got to stay within its limit. It can only output so much voltage, even with the supply providing more. And it has a maximum current that it can provide too. Luckily, they don't really burn out. They just stop providing current at a certain point. So that's something to look up on a data sheet that your particular op amp can handle what you're powering. So if we set the trim pot to one volt, we would add one milliamp of current because we're using a 1000 ohm resistor. If we used a 2000 ohm current setting resistor, we would have got half the current, all things being equal. So five volts, we would have got 2.5 milliamps of current, regardless of load. 500 ohms would have been half of the resistance, so we would have got twice the current for a given voltage. Two milliamps for one volt, and 10 milliamps for 5 volts right there. So, covered everything on the sheet. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting in the screen. And check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.